you guys have been, you particularly, have been very innovative with all of these artifacts. And the one that I would love to have you sketch out is the thinking and the process for developing the David Headley piece and mm. the perfect terrorist work and the work that you did around the, uh, having the, the, the journalist talk about David Headley's life. How did they mm -hmm. all come together? Yeah, so another kind of long-term piece of all this. So, so one piece of this is you assume there's a certain broadcast. You assume that there's a traditional film. You're building out other kinds of products around it. You're building into and out of it. Um, another strain of thought here is the idea that um, just as text turned into something different, in all the forms that we see text now in terms of um, hyperlinks and embedded embeds and short form and iterative blogging and all the innovations that we've seen in the way text is presented online in the last 10 years, um, video will become its own, uh, an actual digital artifact, right? So most video that we've seen really until the last year or two um, is just kind of small television, right? So like um, YouTube is great in the sense that it's really democratized the distribution mechanism, but it's still fundamentally um, linear, uh, non-interactive television. Maybe there's interactivity built around the, the video itself, but, the vi the, 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 but they hadn't yet kind of broken into the box. Um, so we've had a kind of running strain of thought here trying to figure out, okay, what does it look like when you actually break into the box? When you actually say, like, um, what is the what does a documentary look like or what does a story look like when it is fundamentally interactive, when, it was, when it's fundamentally um, uh, uh, a digital artifact. Um, so we, we had a, a kind of get together last, um, about a year ago now, or maybe it's you know, 10 months ago now, where we invited a couple of um, frontline filmmakers who were really um, creative and thinking about this space. So um, Tom Jennings, who was in the David Coleman Headley piece that you're talking about, was one of them, and Tom was also the producer on Law and Disorder, so he had kind of um, already experienced the possibilities of digital as a kind of new form, both in terms of publishing um, and in terms of reporting. And Tom had done a film um, about David Coleman Headley, who was the American who was really the kind of guy who helped mastermind the terrorist attacks in Mumbai. Um, and that, you know, 165 uh, people were dead, and they took, you know, lay siege to the Taj Mahal and all the rest of it. Um, and he was an American. And he was an American who, um, before he had, before he signed up for Lashkar -e Taibi, Taibi was um, a, a heroin smuggler and a DEA informant, um, and had this amazing life in which he was born in Pakistan and then went and lived in Philadelphia. So, after he made. Um, his film for Frontline Broadcast called The Perfect Terrorist, um, Tom was still obsessed with this idea that um, Headley's life and it was only made possible by this like really complex web of relationships um, that he was able to play. So he was kind of always double-crossing people. It's a kind of like spy versus spy um, story. And he brought that idea to this forum and said... Um, Here's what I'm thinking about. Um, I'm, I have in my mind this visual web of people and a story to tell about them. Um, what would that look like as an interactive? And we went out of that forum into a hack day in which at first they built what was essentially a, um, a radio piece, which as you listen to the audio, it moved across a kind of timeline. And as that timeline moved, it surfaced more and more people in what was basically a web of, of interactive um, people showing the relationships he had to um, different law enforcement and to different um, kind of terrorist groups. Um, we then had the idea of, well, that was kind of cool. Um, what if we actually had Tom, like, literally draw the interactive um, on a whiteboard and then animate over the video itself so that as he's talking, you can actually um, click on the people who he's talking about as he draws their relationships to each other and pause the, vi pause the video and go watch other stuff. And then Tom had the cool idea, which was that he remembered and think, you know, th there was these YouTube videos that have flown around um, of Picasso painting on glass. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. And so we took that idea to this, and we went and rented a big-ass piece of glass, or bought a big piece of glass and put it on clamps and shot a six-minute video, seven-minute video of Tom essentially talking to camera and drawing these dots that represented these people. And then we hired this great um, 
interactive firm called Secret Location that really animated over that the whole n network and then built nodes so that you could click on them. And if you were clicking on, you know, his mother, you could go then see a slideshow um, of pictures of her and her life. Or if you were, um, you know, clicking on one of his wives, you could read about um, the, the times that they tried to tell the American government to be aware of him. Um, and what did a secret location use to do that? So I'm not a, I'm not a, a product dev, so I don't want to, like, sound like an idiot by talking too much about this, but um, uh, Mozilla has a, a, a whole new library called Popcorn um, that is kind of premised on a lot of these ideas, so they use Popcorn.js um, to do it. They also have a kind of consumer-friendly tool based on Popcorn called Popcorn Maker that allows you to basically take a YouTube video or, or something like it and kind of do pop-up videos over on top of it. And so they're one of, you know, a couple of people right now that are trying to play in that space and say, like, okay, what does an interactive video look like? What does kind of really visual storytelling that's also interactive look like? Um, and so yeah, they we've been, Sorry, go ahead. No, is that we've been messing around with Popcorn Maker and Popcorn 2, and it, yeah. it does offer a lot of... The Popcorn Maker side offers journalists on the line to be able to produce an audio slideshow or a simple interactive video very quickly. And Popcorn JS allows for people who have some art to the to the video, which obviously Frontline and Secret Location had yeah. for David Headley's piece to really demonstrate a new look of video, which is great, fantastic. Yeah, and I think that what one of the things that we've it's so hard to figure out how to make this do this right. Um, but one of the things that I think was so worked so well about that was that the form followed from the story, um, which is to say that we didn't say, like, what if we did an interactive with a video and there was a web? And then, like, okay, what will the story be? It's that, like, Tom had this idea of this interact of, of this visual, set, like, uh, you know, that, that we started with the editorial concept and you started with a producer who really knew what he was talking about and who could write this script, and then you started to kind of build the form um, with that yeah. as the lead. And, and that's one of the things that we've been trying to sort out here as we've been learning how to do this is where do you start? Um, and, and I think that worked well partially because it started from, you know, the, the editorial brain um, that Tom had and then we were able to kind of create the circumstances to make it possible.